Well, let's, uh, well, let's touch on your work at the moment. So what, what's, um, how do you fund what you're doing? What's the work that you do that you're so passionate about? Obviously, you've got the, I love your, your, your products that you sell, the, the Living Hakuna t-shirts and hoodies, and I can't wait to bump into one and get one of those one day. But tell me about your, your business enter, enterprises. Okay, so um, our main source of income, we have a company of pet supplies. Uh, so we sell, let's say, vitamins, omega-3, glucosamine for dogs. We also said sell grooming supplies. And we have a website and we sell everything online just through our website on you know, eBay, Amazon. Um, and that is our main source of income. So that is where we put you know, most of our focus. And then in addition to that, we have our YouTube channel where we also, you know, we make some money from the ads that YouTube places on our videos. We also have some patrons that support our production. And we also have the t-shirts and we have like a neat, uh, an online guide that we did on how we bought our catamaran. So those kind of are our sources of income. The Everything, you know, related to YouTube is a small portion compared to, you know, our main source of income, which is the e-commerce website. And that's, you know, but both require a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. But I think with YouTube, you know, it's not so focused so much about the money. It's more about, you know, the memories, you know, putting everything together, being able to go back to when we first started and like seeing ourselves not knowing how to do absolutely anything and, you know, making mistakes. I think it's so much fun. And then also we grow such an awesome community of people that are very supportive. And, you know, that's, a lot more uh, super special so i think that's i guess not so money focused but it has other you know a huge plus that is yeah it's the lifestyle isn't it it's the, like i said it's the lifestyle in the community even yeah. today i noticed going into the yacht clubs as we went out just the community is it's so special it's a real special thing um, yeah. let, let, let's go back to i'm just intrigued because obviously you've got i love the two parts to your world i love the the land parts and then obviously i'm i'm passionate about the water part but yeah. talk to me about your experiences on land that must have been awesome traveling around just being free to do that and in a in a trailer that gives you the flexibility that must have been a, you must have some fun stories from that time yeah i mean it's a lot different than 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 the boat and that's how we learn that to value the things like water energy because i mean like like in our trailer, we, we didn't go to trailer like parks where you just park your trailer and connect it to shore power and 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 water. We were like doing boondocking and we would go just up to a forest and just park there for two days. And yeah, and I mean we had to to get energy from our solar power and water that we had a small 40 gallon tank so we will make it last for at least two days so you can imagine like 40 gallons to take a shower to cook to wash the dishes so yeah it's it's pretty pretty cool and we learned a lot so right i think that's where we learned that we were so much more happier by by having like really simple things and you know it doesn't seem like it because now we live on a catamaran but really when we lived in the trailer it was only what was it 16 feet yeah 16, 16 feet long and so it only fit like our bed and then each dog that's exactly how you know how <laughs> big the trailer was and and it was so awesome we had such a great time it's like what alejo said you know we learned to value the things that you kind of forget when you live in a house when you're you're plugged into the regular life you don't realize where the trash goes you don't realize where the water comes from because everything's so unlimited that you forget like just the basics i guess and that's what when you do when you go to this alternative law which is about other things that you wouldn't be conscious about when you're just living in an urban area i don't know if that even makes sense but <laughs> yeah definitely it's like the thing i love about camping is when you get in i find camping and, and again i go in the boat it's a little bit like dancing uh, you get you start off and you're slightly out of tilt and then the more you dance the more you get into the rhythm and it's a little bit like camping you start knowing exactly where everything goes you can close your eyes and you know exactly where to pick things up i think so yeah. that's a really cool way to do it for sure so um the move to the catamaran let's i can't hold off talking about your <laughs> lagoon 420 i've done quite well we've done we've talked about land but now let's talk about the real cool stuff All right. um 
So let's 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 go. First of all, um, obviously, I'm, I've got a bit of inside information having watched watched the videos. But let's tell tell the audience about how you went about uh, choosing your Lagoon 420. I know you did a really cool video on your six top tips uh, for buying. But just how did you pick your boat, and, and what what advice would you give of of that journey? Well, I think for us. Um, I think the first thing is people have to choose what's a priority for them. You know, if they want to go with comfort or performance or luxury. And, you know, for us, we were all about comfort because, you know, if, if we want to feel kind of adrenaline or something like that, we go for kiteboarding. So for us, you know, the sailing was just, okay, we want an apartment in the water. That's kind of what we're looking for. And so we were, you know, we were focused on comfort. And when we look into... Uh, the catamarans, you know, we were into Sound of Joe, Lagoon, Leopard. And and for us, what was very important was also we have two large dogs, Ozzy and Echo, which you mentioned at the beginning. And they're cute. They're very big dogs, very hairy. And, you know, so we have already, they have adapted a lot to just travel with us, you know, whether on the trailer or by airplane going to Airbnbs. And now we have to make sure that they adapted to living on a boat, right? So for us, it was okay. They're already going to live on a boat with us. We have to make sure that they're comfortable, that they have enough space for them. <laughs> Sorry, that was weird. But we, our priority was also our dogs. Very and nice. so we looked for something very spacious um, in terms of the um, salon. We wanted, you know, for them to be able to walk around. And then for the bathrooms, we didn't want to shower, you know, wet shower. And what that means is like you shower literally standing on top of the toilet. So we wanted to make sure we had something separate. And I think, do you have anything? Uh, well, the other thing that, that was that was like uh, that we looked for was uh, we were looking for a mass production catamaran, like um, what's it called, brand. Mm -hmm. Just in case if we didn't like the lifestyle, it will be easy to resell the boat and not lose too much money. Because if we were going to go with one of the custom boats or something, like, once you're gonna sell it, it might take longer or you might have to lower the price to be able to sell it. So I think that's why we were looking at like Lagoon or Leopard or Fountain Pajo. It's, it's I think that's one of the biggest reasons, yeah. right? Yeah.